Welcome back to the Budget Gamer Channel. Today we're going to be looking at a game called Agatha Knife. Now, I would seen this one several times in the eShop, popping up when it was new or on sale, and I honestly couldn't decide if I wanted to get it or not. Now, to me, indie games are just like books. They can be as unique as the author, and they're always a new way to see the world through someone else's eyes. And from the imagery, all I could tell is that it was unique and weird, so I thought I'd roll the dice and give it a try. As far as the uniqueness and the weirdness, I was not disappointed. I got exactly what I expected. You start off the game as Agatha, the main protagonist, who's a young girl who lives in the back room of a butcher shop. At night, she makes friends and plays with all the animals in the butcher shop, and in the morning, well, she butchers them. So as far as backstories go, yeah, unique is probably a bit of an understatement. The main storyline, though, is that the butcher shop is going under, and Agatha feels like it's her duty to re-inspire people to eat meat so that the butcher shop can once again flourish, giving her animals to play with and animals to slaughter. So throughout this point-and-click adventure, you're actually trying to design a new religion called carnivorism. The crass views on religion and mainstream society at large are strung all throughout the game, allowing Agatha to make her own religion of carnivorism any way she sees fit. Because according to the game, religion is all about believing anything you want just to make yourself feel better. And while I'll be honest, I do think that this is absolutely hilarious as far as a game goes, but the unfortunate side is that the point-and-click adventure really couldn't keep up with the potential for the story itself. Agatha Knife is a very, very slow game, where the main character's meandering pace puts the whole game into a meandering pace. Other than that, certain story elements seem to be put in almost just for the sake of confusion. But in other cases, certain new characters will pop into a screen right after you accomplish an objective, letting you know without actually playing the game what you're supposed to do next. And while either one of these is actually bad, having them both together seems to contradict the gameplay. It makes it impossible to figure out, is this an easy game or a hard game? Am I supposed to talk to everyone or just look for what's new? But besides that, I'm sure you can tell from the initial trailer on the eShop, the visuals were actually a really big portion of this game. The art styles and the color tones really make the character of the settings and the characters themselves flourish, adding a whole new level of dimension to their actual interactions. But the somewhat resoundingly enlightened dialogue between between Agatha and any other character does kind of get a little old. I mean, if the point of the game is that you're a young girl trying to discover the truth, how can you have all of the answers in every single situation? Now, the developer's objective to show that even a child can see how silly some of these things we struggle with are is probably a positive message, but if your audience isn't 100% on board, it might come across as a little off-putting. Throughout Agatha's interactions within the game, she critiques, among others, shopping at supermarkets, taking your pets to a veterinarian, having computers at a public library, the physique and attitudes of construction workers, watching the Travel Channel or reality television, zoos and circuses, and the list goes on. But despite the broad swath of critiques all throughout Agatha Knife, the hilarity of the interactions themselves actually make it pretty enjoyable. As far as the actual adventure mechanic though, it's a two-stick point and click, meaning left stick moves your character and right stick moves the cursor. The cursor movement though is actually independent of the character movement on the screen, so you can have a dynamic cursor movement while walking around with the character. Though this does take some getting used to, it becomes intuitive pretty quickly, but honestly if you're playing in handheld mode, using the touch screen is far more effective. All in all, I'd say that Agatha Knife is a pretty decent point and click adventure that's well suited to its price point. But if you want to download this one and give it a try, be aware that there is an agenda. It is full of social critique, it's full of dry humor, the interactions are great, but there's a message that's trying to come across underneath. So if you don't share these views or you're not open to experiencing someone else's perspective, be prepared to take it with several grains of salt. And while I'm not upset that I spent four or five dollars on it, it's probably not gonna make it into the Great Indies playlist. Well, that about wraps up the review for Agatha Knife. I hope you found the review interesting or insightful, and if you were thinking about downloading this game, I really hope that it was helpful. In all honesty, it's a really decent point and click, but I do not think it was meant for everybody. So if you have any questions or comments about the game or anything else, feel free to leave them below. I'll get to them as soon as I can. And don't forget to subscribe for the latest content. I try to put these videos out as often as I can, so make sure to hit that little bell icon so you get notified as soon as they come out online. Anyway, this has been Budget Gamer, so as always, Thanks for watching.